a heck of a legacy that you've had behind yourself, right? Well, yeah, I've done a lot of things. Well, look at my face. <laughs> I've been around a long time. At least it happened naturally, he says. That is certainly <laughs> true. We could quote some other people, couldn't we? Yes. Okay, I'm a middle class English boy, um, Scottish as well. Uh, and my parents were journalists, uh, quite successful journalists, not serious. We're back on that boat. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, they were very good journalists and uh, very bright people. and. Um, they were good people to grow up with. They, they separated and uh, remarried and both very well. Most of my family has remarried, uh, except for my wife, who's never been married before. Everybody's been married before, not my family. Uh, I thought you'd like to hear that. Um, anyway, and I, I done my way away to school until I went to a school in south south of London, which was founded um, all those years ago, 400 years ago, by Shakespeare and Marlowe's greatest leading actor, a man called Edward Allen, and um, he had a very good career uh, as an actor, obviously he was very good, um, and he made a lot of money, and he hadn't been a very good boy in life, like most of us, um, so when he got to a certain age, he thought he'd better fix things up with him upstairs, um, and so he founded a school for poor boys in South London, which was a charity school. That blossomed, that school, and became now two what we call public schools. You don't call them that, you call them the other thing. Uh, private schools. Um, for rich people who could afford it. Now, it's completely changed its spots. But when I went there, it was shortly after the Second World War, and it was um, owned by the state, so we didn't have to pay for it, so I could go there. Okay, I went there at the age of 15, very late. Um, reason I didn't even go into. And there was a young, new young English master there um, who was very keen to revive the tradition of doing Shakespeare in that school. Um, they somehow let it lack. With that background, they still weren't doing it anyway. Um, so he revived, he did a production of Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare, modern dress, outdoors, uh, very innovative. And, uh, I'd never thought about acting before in my life. Uh, because I was good at reading out loud with my little brother, and uh, I could tell stories quite well. Um, I was chosen to play the part of Mark Anthony. I don't know how many of you people know the play, but it's a wonderful part, wonderful, very it's a big part. And, and uh, that was great, but the next, that didn't do it. The next term was uh, a Gilbert and Sullivan opera. Do you do them here? Do you have Gilbert and Sullivan opera here? Uh, we, do it, we do it in Canada. You do it in Canada. So I'll, I'll address the rest of this to you then. <laughs> No, and in it, um, there's a, a, a comic, comic, comedian character with a, a very famous patter song didn't, 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 that, that Danny Kaye used to do. Anyway, I did that, and for the first and probably the last time in my life, I, I knew what it was to hold an audience in the palm of my hand. It was simply it was, it was adrenaline, it was a magic juice. Uh, and I went home and I told my parents I wanted to do this. and. Uh, Instead of, in those days it was very unfashionable um, to go into the theatre, but they, instead of being appalled, they were thrilled to be up they had a 15 year old who knew what he wanted to do. And so they kicked me off and encouraged me. And that, that English teacher went on to found what is a very important institution in Great Britain now, called the National Youth Theatre, which people from all branches, kids from all branches of life, go there and spend maybe a year doing productions, learning what theatre is all about, what it's like acting, or what it's like cooperating with other people, and this is what it's all about, as you know. And uh, it's a very, very thriving thing. And, I, he, and he founded that, and he is entirely responsible. I didn't go to that. I was the first to leave our school to become an actor. Um, but I uh, owe my entire life, whatever it added up to, to that one man. I'll quickly fill you in. I'm, uh, I've been married twice. The first time was to a very eminent actress now called, she's a dame, Dame Eileen Atkins, and I'm now married to an actress uh, in, in England called Ida Blair. And I've been married to her for 48 years. I have a son of 44, no I don't, I have a son of 46, um, and two granddaughters, and uh, I'm still working, I'm 81 years old, and I'm bloody proud of it. 
cue for applause. <laughs> so, so what brings you into film? Okay, film. Um, I started off at the Royal Shakespeare Company, okay, which I'm still with, incidentally. Um, I've done 14 seasons with them um, in my, during my life. It's about a third of my career. Um, and I'm in, back, I'm, I'm, I'm in Brooklyn at the moment, uh, taking part in four plays which are being done by William Shakespeare by the Royal Shakespeare Company. So it's very convenient for me to come over this weekend. When, as you see, I'm not working in, in, in Bath. Academy of the first one, I left at the Royal Shakespeare Company in 1959. <laughs> um, I promise you it was 1959. <laughs> and went to what's called the Royal Court Theatre, which was the theatre where all the innovative plays were done. I was very lucky to get into there and did a couple of plays with Albert Finney, who some of you might have. Oh, yes. I, I oh, hope yes. you've heard of him. Um, uh, and various things. And that company uh, of, of the Royal Court was headed by a director of film director called Tony Richardson, uh, who started, of course, in theatre himself. And he, his first big venture in the film was a film called Tom Jones, which is an adaptation of an 18th century novel, very funny, very funny, which Albert started. And he used all the actors from that company, who were not terribly famous, but all terribly good, really good, solid actors. And uh, it was a tremendous experience, and I was in that. Um, that's the thing that kicked me off. And that's the, the only film I've made, I've made a lot of films, or I've been in a lot of films, uh, that's the only one I can really call, really truly call, a legendary film. It's, if you haven't seen it, I beg you to, to, to get it. Show it on your, get it out. It is so entertaining and, and uh, terribly, terribly English and completely ridiculous and wonderful. And uh, that was the first film and the first villain I played. And that set, because I think I was quite good at it, I, that set me on the track of doing villains, which has been the, <laughs> most of my career, as you may have noticed. <laughs> Though I do play a few nicer people these days. Now I'm quite old and mature. <laughs>